former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan. Mr Khan, thank you for your time. Why won't you comply with the arrest warrant and allow the law to take its course? Well, according to the law, my uh, I had protective bail till the 18th. So four days earlier, the police arrives uh, with the arrest warrant, which is totally illegal. So what we are doing is we are waiting for tomorrow morning when we, we will again appear. My lawyers will appear in court and challenge this uh, warrant of arrest. Recording stopped. And in the meantime, you've released a video and you're asking your supporters and you have a lot of passionate supporters. You're asking them to come out and fight for what you say are their freedoms. Are you not worried that your message asking people to fight could result in violence? Well, fight for their freedom means fight for their fundamental rights, which means peacefully protesting what you believe the constitution and the law of the land what what you gives you the right to protest now all over europe you have people in france people protesting for pensions in england people protesting because of uh, you know inflation and pay rises so protest is part of the democratic process never in my 26 years of politics have i ever asked my uh, my workers ever to be violent and the arrest warrant, Mr. Khan, that you're facing, it's in relation to a case where the government is accusing you of buying gifts given by foreign dignitaries from the state gift depository, failing to disclose the assets and declarations submitted to the Election Commission. What's your response to this charge, this charge that the police are trying to arrest you over? This is absolutely a fabricated uh, 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 allegation. It's not even a, there's nothing, it's not even contested by us. It's just a charge and an allegation made by the police, by this government. Now, there are 80 cases against me. And let's just to let you know, in the last few months, every other day, there's a fresh case. So if there's a case of murder, there's a case of sedition, there's a case of blasphemy, there's a case of terrorism. So the, every other day there's a case. All we have asked, we are, we, have, we are going to go to the Supreme Court and we are going to ask them to club all the cases together. And, and just like uh, the ex-Prime Minister of India, Naseema Rao, he was given the option that, that uh, because his life was also under threat, which mine is, I've, there's already been an assassination attempt on me. All we've asked the court is that club all the cases together and hear them in a secure place. At the moment, I, when I attended my two co uh, court appearances, there was no security. And the government itself says that my life is under threat. So therefore, all we have asked is that in a secure place, either they uh, uh, club the cases there or then do it on video conferencing. Like for instance, the man who shot me, he's in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, and because they say his life is under threat, he appears in court on, on virtually, in other words, through, through video. So you want the same um, rights that have been given to him. The government says the interior minister is saying they will arrest you by the end of Tuesday. If this happens, what does it mean uh, for your party ahead of provincial elections that are due in April and the national election later this year? Well, uh, I'm mentally prepared. I'm already uh, that they would come and arrest me tonight because there's a huge force outside. I mean, they have not just the police, they've got the rangers there too, which is the, which is the army. And it seems as if Pakistan's biggest terrorist is holed up inside. So, uh, you know, I think they're determined. The reason why they want to arrest me is not because they're worried about rule of law, because the biggest criminals are right now sitting in government 60% of cabinet is on bail on corruption cases. It's because they want to remove me from the electoral contest because they, they are petrified of the popularity of my party. It won out of 37 by-elections, it swept 30 elections. So all opinion, according to all opinion polls, we would sweep this uh, upcoming election. And, and that's why they want me removed from the scene. The, the attempted murder was because of that. And now this uh, putting me in jail is exactly following the same script. 
I mean, the attempted murder is an allegation that's made by you, Mr Khan. I want to come back to the point that you made, um, to what you're saying, rather, that the real criminals, you say, are in Parliament, but you are the only Pakistani Prime Minister to be removed from power through a no-confidence vote in Parliament. What makes you think that this isn't the end of your political career? Well, it, normally when someone is removed from power, uh, it means that they have to be prepared for political wilderness for quite some time. Uh, in, in our past, governments have been removed from power, but always on corruption cases or very poor economic performance coupled with corruption cases. This is the only time a government was had a track uh, its performance, according to the Economic Survey of Pakistan, which is an annual public publication of the country's yearly economic performance. So according to that, uh, 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 the, the, the journal that is published every year, we had the best economic performance in the last 17 years, despite two years of COVID. So our government was not removed either because of corruption or because of lack of economic performance. It was removed through conspiracy. And that's why there has been such a public backlash so never has a government been out ousted and the popularity has soared. I mean, in Pakistan's history, yeah. never has a government the amount of popularity that my party has. And it's because people feel it was unjustifiably removed through conspiracy. And you have alluded, more than alluded, in fact, to U.S. involvement in um, this conspiracy to remove you from power. Why would the U.S. be involved in this? Well, in the beginning, we thought it was this was initiated by the U.S., but actually it was initiated by an ex-army chief uh, who was then the army chief. And he built this campaign against me. Uh, and actually, he was the one who hired a lobbyist called Hussein Akani, who actually campaigned while I was the prime minister. He was campaigning, telling the Americans I was anti-American. And that's when, because of what was fed to them, this letter, this, oh, sorry, not the letter, the cipher conversation between uh, our ambassador in Washington uh, uh, and, and, the, and Donald Liu, the, the, the Under Secretary of State for South Asia, that, that cipher uh, was, was initiated then from Washington, which said okay. Imran Khan should be removed from power or there will be consequences uh, to Pakistan and through an, a no confidence motion. That's how it came about. So yes, the US was involved, but as we discovered later on, not, uh, not because they thought there was something wrong. All right. They were actually told by our ex-army chief that it was I who was anti-American. So that's, that, that was what happened. Uh Former Prime Minister Pakistan joining us live from his home in Lahore there. We thank you for your time.